Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And today we're gonna to be looking at an overlooked lab that can tell you about the health of your arteries and how to clean them out. That's what we're gonna be uncovering in this video. So be sure to stay until the end and I'll show you where you can get a free protocol so that you can actually take control and implement what I'm gonna show you in this video to actually help lower your risk for heart disease, to actually clean out your arteries, and then also what you can do to work with your doctor to figure out if you're at risk and to really understand what's going on with your body. Now, before we get started, I would really like it if you would subscribe and like this video. Please share it with any of your family or friends that you think may find this information helpful or useful because it's my mission to help as many people as possible. And by sharing this and liking and, and subscribing, you allow this message to get out to the masses and the people that really need to hear this information. And so thank you for helping me accomplish my mission. So thank you again, and let's get into the topic for today. Now, damage to the arteries causes placking, which can be due to high sugar diets, diabetes, oxidation, or many other causes. This is what causes the LDL or the bad cholesterol to form in the arteries. And it forms almost like a cement because it's trying to fill in the cracks in the arteries to prevent them from breaking open or prevent them from getting further damaged. Now, this placking, which is made up of calcium and LDL, these calcium plaques in the arteries can house microbial communities. There is a strong correlation between the microbes in your mouth and also the issues that go on in your arteries and the hearts. Now, the placking can actually cover up these bacteria that cause inflammation in the arteries and it causes more and more placking. So making sure that you're brushing your teeth, you're doing the appropriate things to kill any microbes, not feeding them sugar is a very key element to helping the arteries heal and to decrease your inflammation. Now this is particularly true if you have leaky gut or your gums bleed a lot. So you wanna be careful. If you notice that you have a lot of bleeding gums, be careful about your sugar intake, and then also be sure that you're going to your dentist and checking with them regularly. A fun fact is that, did you know that vitamin K2 will help calcium to be absorbed into the bone rather than reside in the arteries? So if you're not taking K2, then you may wanna look at it, and if you feel like you're at risk for heart disease or if you and your practitioner are working on that, you may wanna mention to add that to your supplement regimen or to add that into your protocol. Now for most people, cholesterol has been considered the cardiovascular lab test to, to assess your risk of cardiovascular events such as a heart attack. Now, however, increased cholesterol levels were found in less than 50% of all heart attack and stroke victims. So these people that were having heart attacks and strokes, they actually found that 50% of them did not have elevated cholesterol. So what is going on if somebody is telling us that cholesterol is the main cause, is that really the issue or is there a deeper underlying issue going on? Now, researchers at the World Health Organization published a study which pointed to an overlooked risk factor that seemed to account for the other half of people. It was a blood marker known as fibrinogen. Now, to understand just how dangerous excess levels of this blood marker can be, we must first look at how it works in your bloodstream. Now, fibrinogen is a protein produced by the liver and in small quantities is an absolute vital component for survival. When you cut your or scrape your skin, fibrinogen is the agent which causes the blood to thicken and eventually create a scab which clots the wound altogether. It also works in your arteries by creating small clotting agents that patch up cracks and crevices from inflammation. It uses calcium and LDL to do this. Now the problem begins when levels of fibrinogen become elevated. When this occurs, instead of creating a small clot to repair the arterial damage, the fibrinogen begins to create an adverse event, a much larger clot than is needed. These oversized clots can grow to the point where they close off the veins, blood vessels, or major arteries entirely and cause heart attacks and stroke. So as we can see here, when we have excess levels of this fibrinogen factor in the blood, then that can be a real big warning sign that 
there is potential for a heart attack or stroke. Now, a Harvard University study published in the Journal of American College of Cardiology found that those with high fibrinogen levels had a twofold increase in myocardial infarction or heart attack risk. And still another study published in the prestigious Royal College of General Practitioners found that when coupled with heart health risk factors such as cholesterol and high blood pressure, incidence of heart attacks was respectively six to 12 times greater in those with high plasma fibrinogen levels than in those with low fibrinogen levels. In other words, even if you have high cholesterol or high blood pressure, you're respectively 600% and 1200% less likely to suffer a heart attack if your fibrinogen levels are in line. Isn't that pretty wild? Now, assessing your risk, your levels of fibrinogen can be easily tested by any doctor simply by asking for what's called a fibrinogen activity test. I like to see my patient's fibrinogen levels under 300 milligrams per deciliter. So if you're a doctor, they need to do some research. We don't know everything. That's why we, one, I make these videos to educate you, but have them kind of look at that and see these studies and see what's going on. Now, if your levels are lower, I'd continue to get your levels tested around twice a year, especially if you're in that older population, if you're obese, overweight, if you have higher levels of cholesterol, then you definitely want to be checking these associated risk factors and having this part of your kind of health checkup so that you can definitely see if that is creeping up or if it's getting higher and higher. Now, if higher, you should get your levels tested about every three months. That's when the cycles of the red blood cells go through. So about every three months, you recycle your blood cells so you can kind of see what's going on. Now, how to lower your fibrinogen levels? Following a strict Mediterranean diet is always a good way to go. Now you can try keto, carnivore. These are some of the newer diets that are coming out that have really good research behind them and people are seeing a lot of success. But you wanna make sure that you're doing right because I see some people do keto and then they get really bad migraines when they're not in under the proper guidance and they're just not getting the vitamins and minerals that they really need. Another thing to do is consume foods high in omega-3, EPA, and DHA. DHA, I apologize. I re recommend taking a supplement between two to three grams per day. The following foods are rich in omega-3, such as wild salmon, mackerel, and sardines, and avocados. Also, eat plenty of nuts and seeds, such as macadamia nuts, peanuts, walnuts, and flax seeds. These can really help. And use macadamia nut oil a state bottled olive oil and avocado oil as like your cooking oils. There are two other supplements, take natokinase and serapeptidase. Those are two supplements that you can use that will actually lower your fibrinogen levels as well. Vitamin E is a powerful vitamin that can actually prevent the damage that occurs in the heart and the arteries. So making sure that your vitamin E levels are appropriate or supplementing with one. Now, lactic acid bacteria. Now, this is a pretty cool one, especially if you have any gut issues or leaky gut, SIBO, anything like that. Now, these are found in sauerkraut, which is very high in lactic acid bacteria. Sorry which can help lower blood pressure, reduce biofilms, kill off potentially pathogenic bacteria, and help regulate LDL bacteria. Now, those are bacteria that contribute to the cholesterol level so they can actually reduce that. It's pretty cool. Now, it can help with the secretion of bile salts, which may also help with the absorption of vitamin E and K2. I see a lot of people that actually have malabsorption and maldigestive issues, so they're just not getting the appropriate amount of vitamins and minerals that they need in order to sustain normal function because a lot of those vitamins and minerals get converted into your neurotransmitters, your hormones, your skin, your muscle tissue, your bone, your hair, your nails, whatever it may be. So making sure that your gut health and your absorption health is really good is kind of key factor. Now, sauerkraut is a superfood which can help support your gut and heart health. It has tons of vitamin C and K2. So just like we talked about earlier, that K2 can actually help with the calcium absorption into the bone rather than it getting stuck in your arteries. So it's something that you may wanna consider when you're going through this. 
Now, if you found this information helpful, then please help me achieve my mission of helping as many people as possible by hitting the like and subscribing to my channel, and then share this with your family and friends as well. So I really appreciate all of your support and hopefully you're finding these videos helpful. Go back and check out some of my other videos. I have other videos about cholesterol. I have other videos about gut health, nutrition, migraines, dementia, Alzheimer's. So check those videos out. I would love to hear your feedback. I'm here to help you achieve a healthier life so that you can have the highest quality. So thank you again and you all have a great night. Bye-bye.